Hello everyone, welcome to tutorial one of Selenium Automation Tool Introduction to Selenium and its components So let's see what we are going to do cover in this So agenda for this particular topic is First is introduction to Selenium Automation Tool And its components So what is Selenium? Selenium is an automation tool which is used to automate great web based applications only what are web based applications something which you can open on your browser okay uh, some of the examples which you frequently use are facebook.com gmail.com all those applications have something which you open on your browser so they are known as web based application and uh, selenium is a tool which does not depend on the technology in which website is designed it can automate any website be it uh, written in Java programming language or be it written in a .NET framework where, wherever it is written it can be like your Selenium can automate that particular application talking about the performance and execution speed of Selenium it's much much better than their competitors so a small introduction to the Selenium uh, proceeding ahead next is components of Selenium so we have four components of Selenium Selenium ID Selenium RC RC stands for remote control then we have selenium web driver then we have selenium grid out of these four for us in this course we'll be covering selenium grid 90% of the time we'll spend in selenium uh, web driver and uh, rest 10% will spend on selenium grid moving ahead let's talk about selenium id so selenium id is a record and play kind of tool which works with Mozilla Firefox only and it is installed as an add-on okay so the Selenium ID is something which is not used these days because it has become obsolete uh, just recently a week ago I came to know that now even that older add-on is something which is uh, which is not compatible with the latest version of Mozilla why this happened because uh, this Selenium ID is something which is not a concrete tool. It cannot help you in writing complex scenarios. You can simply automate simple scenarios using this. Okay. It does not provide much assertions toward us. So there were many limitations with Selenium ID. So slowly and gradually uh, Selenium organization has stopped providing support of Selenium ID. Now one reason why Selenium ID was famous was this prototype testing here there is I have mentioned it was used as prototype testing now what do you mean by prototype testing uh, uh, like whenever we start automation first of all we do some kind of uh, POC to check that the tool which we are going to use whether it is something which uh, which will help in our application or not okay so uh, selenium ID is one such tool with which you can show your uh, project managers or your product owners that this application can be tested you will just record things and uh, quickly convert uh, like one feature selenium id had was that the whatever script you record in selenium id you can take it out in uh, different uh, programming languages like you can take out that code in ruby you can take out in java you can take it out in c sharp okay now the code which you have that can all that uh, is like a proof that yes my application can be automated using selenium and then go ahead and start automating through selenium web driver this was the one reason and second reason which helped me as well that was that uh, it helped people to learn syntax if people are learning by their own okay because the same feature that you can extract out the code in different programming languages uh, those uh, that code which we see was something uh, which can be used uh, to understand the syntax how to write the code okay so that's that's are some features for selenium id not a good tool it's an absolute product now so we'll not learn it let's talk something about selenium rc rc stands for remote control rc was the first tool of selenium suit from here the journey of selenium started earlier it was known as javascript executor okay it was the first tool which provided support of all the programming languages major programming languages like 
C# Sharp, Java, Perl, Ruby, Python, and PHP. It was also the first programming language. Sorry, it was the first uh, tool which also provided the support of major vendors of the browsers like Mozilla Firefox, Google Chrome, Internet Explorer. Okay, so th this was the first tool which supported all the major vendors because the tool uh, which was famous at that time was QTP and QTP supported only Internet Explorer at that time. Later on, it provided support of other browsers like Mozilla and Chrome. Okay, now let's talk about some history also about this RC. So I want to show you one person whose name was Jason Huggins. Let me just open that person. Just give me a second. So if you look at this guy, the second one and this fourth one, I don't know all are the same person or not. I guess they are it's the same person. The person which you see here, this guy, is responsible for Selenium RC. Okay, and there is a small history behind why he gave this name known as RC. Because if you look at the word Selenium, it is something which is nowhere related to IT world. It is a word which is related to chemistry. Okay, so there is a small history behind how uh, Jason Hagen gave this name as Selenium. Uh, what happened was uh, the team, uh, this team was was working on Selenium. Uh, earlier it was known as JavaScript Executor. So the team was working on this product called JavaScript Executor. They were looking for a better name to launch it in market. And they were planning to launch it as open source only. So Jason Hacking just as a joke said that the current tool which is famous in market uh, and uh, is uh, covering all the market for automation is QTP and QTP that time was owned by a company known as Mercury. So uh, this Jason Hacking, he said, let's name it Selenium. Selenium is an antidote of Mercury. And that's how this came name. Everybody liked the idea and then they named it Selenium. Now why RC? That is remote control because it was like a remote which was controlling your browser. So some feature provided by Selenium. So I hope you uh, enjoyed the history and what are the features of Selenium RC. But there was one limitation with its architecture. So let's first understand its architecture. Then I'll tell you the limitation. So if we talk about the architecture of Selenium RC, we have three things here. First thing where we are writing our code. Second, uh, where server is running. And third, where browser is running. Now, what is this middle thing we see? This is something known as Selenium server. It was a manual process at that time when RC was there. We had to make this thing up every time. And whatever code you will write, okay, whatever code in whatever programming language which Selenium supports you write, it was sent to Selenium server. Selenium server used to interpret that code and used to execute JavaScript on the browser. Now, uh, your browser, after executing the JavaScript, sends the response back in JavaScript format only. Selenium server used to understand that and sends you back the response in whatever language you were using. So it was like a three-way process. Command was sent to the server, server interprets them and sends JavaScript uh, here on the browser. Those JavaScripts were executed on the browser. Whatever response we get, that was sent back to the server. Server then uh, interprets that response and sends it back to the uh, to wherever your code is there. So it was a three-way process. Okay. And uh, one more limitation was there that uh, the methods which were used in this Selenium scripts were little bit ambiguous. Okay. And they were not much clear okay so because of this middleman you see this uh, uh, selenium server you see the execution speed was high okay it took more time to execute the scripts okay so uh, then there was uh, something known as selenium web driver came again there is a small history behind how selenium web driver came into picture so i want to show you one more person who is responsible for this uh, web driver and his 
name is Simon Stewart. Okay, so this is the guy. Uh, he's working with Google. And why I'm showing you this person is because he's a person who is working free on this Selenium project. He's not charging at all to Google for this project. He's the project manager of Selenium. Currently, he's working on Selenium 4 and Selenium 5. Both the projects are working uh, parallelly. Okay. Actually, this guy uh, liked this tool called Selenium RC, but he didn't like one thing that was the Selenium server, the middleman. So what he thought, let's remove this Selenium server and let's write a programming language or uh, let's write, write an automation tool which can directly communicate with the browsers. Okay, so he wanted something like this, that uh, uh, whatever language you are using, okay, uh, so it also supported all those languages and you can directly communicate to the browser. Okay, so that was WebDriver. Now, uh, he went to Jason Hugging and said, I have created a tool which can directly communicate with Selenium. So both of them, Jason and Stewart, they came together and merged these two tools. They merged both of them and then came this something known as Selenium WebDriver. When the Selenium WebDriver was launched, that time it had everything of Selenium RC. Okay, and it was known as Selenium 2. But slowly and gradually, people liked the WebDriver more and they started moving from RC to WebDriver, Selenium WebDriver. Okay, and slowly and gradually, they started, uh, they stopped the support of RC. Recently, uh, another version of Selenium is being launched and that is Selenium 3. Selenium 3 does not have RC at all. It only and only has WebDriver. So this is a small history behind uh, how it evolved from Selenium RC to WebDriver and now Selenium WebDriver to Selenium 3. Okay, this is the architecture where your Selenium commands can directly communicate with your browser. Talking about certain features of Selenium WebDriver, it's an open source tool. It supports all the key vendors of the browsers like Mozilla Firefox, Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, Safari and many more. It also supports multiple languages like C Sharp, Java, Ruby, Perl, Python, and PHP. It also supports major platforms like Linux, Windows, Mac. So it, you can learn, you can try Selenium on any operating system you want. Okay, you can do it on Linux, you can do it on Windows, and you don't have to change anything. The same code which you have written on Windows, just take it out, put it on Mozilla, sorry, put it on, put it on Windows, and you can continue with it. That's the beauty of Selenium WebDriver. Okay, one more feature, no middleman like RC was required. The API is very easy to remember. I'll give you some example here. Like if I say I have to write something in a text box. So for that, there is a simple method called send keys. Okay, similarly, uh, if you want to navigate to a URL. So there is a simple method known as navigate to or dot get. Okay, so they are very easy to remember. APIs are there. APIs means methods. And it is also easy to integrate with many testing framework. In our course, we will also learn uh, JUnit and TestNG. Okay, so this is how, uh, these are some features of Selenium WebDriver. Talking about the last component of Selenium uh, is Selenium Grid. Now, uh, this is again something which uh, which was developed by a person uh, who is not uh, from the Selenium organization. What uh, problem you will face once your product or your framework will get stable and you will have a lot of Selenium scripts available with you. Execution time will be one problem and that's a problem, a universal problem which everybody faces that uh, when your number of test cases becomes huge let's say you have some 100 and 200 test cases they take lots of time to execute okay if i talk about my project i have somewhere around 400 test cases and they take almost four to five hours if i don't use grid so what uh, this guy did uh, who invented this grid i don't remember his name but yeah what he did was he uh, created
created a network like this. He created something known as hub, which was a controlling unit, and he also created certain node. So you can say node one, node two, node three, and multiple nodes are there. Okay, so he created something like this. Now in this, you can uh, execute your code from a hub on multiple machines parallelly. Okay. You can just shoot out your code on node one. You can shoot out your code on node two, three, four, parallelly. Because of this, earlier the code, uh, earlier uh, that uh, the total test cases which were taking somewhere around four to five hours, was now taking time divided by five, as hub can execute co code on itself as well. So there were five nodes. So on five machines. Parallel test cases were executing. So let's say earlier five hours were taken to execute those 400 test cases. Now it is just taking one hour, close to one hour. Okay. So in our course, we'll learn how to create this network of hub and nodes, and we'll also learn how to execute code from hub to different nodes. So that is a small architecture of Selenium Grid. The few feature it provides. Uh, those features are parallel execution, platform independent, it supports almost all operating systems, it's language independent, like you can uh, create it, create these network, no matter whatever programming language you're using for your scripts. Then uh, browser independent, it's like that, you can create first node with Mozilla, you can create second node with Chrome, you can create third node with uh, any other. You can even have a combination like this first node is a Linux node, second node is a Windows node, and third node is a Grid node. You can have a feature like this as well. So that's the benefit of having Selenium Grid. And uh, the most important one is the fast execution. It reduces the execution time and test cases are executed parallelly. Parallelly on multiple machines. That's the feature of Okay, so that's all for this particular topic. I hope you enjoyed uh, what uh, learning about different components. So for our course, we'll be proceeding with Selenium Web Driver and Selenium Grid. Selenium Grid cannot be executed without Grid without Web Driver. So let's first learn Web Driver, and then we'll come to Grid. Thanks everyone. See you in next tutorial. Bye bye.